question to myself. I was like, okay, what would be the best beneficial thing for everyone, right? So styles makes jujitsu. That's my personal opinion. Jujitsu is for all because every style and every um, way of the way the, per the person, the personalities you can fit right into jujitsu. Whether you're introvert or you're extrovert or you're whatever. Douchebags, right, Tom? You know, all, everybody fits in. <laughs> so, I don't know why I got that reputation. <laughs> it's, all, it's all our perception, right? We know you're not that. <laughs> we just say it a lot. <laughs> but, but so my point was, where I find my the best my best asset to the team is that I take what you have and I try to make it better. Instead of remaking jujitsu something to look like mine, I see the gap or where you can fit some of the things that I like and it may work. I got people that in one day it, they learn a, um, a technique and the next week they go, my God, I've been doing that the whole week. So that is my, my contribution to the team. I can make you better wherever you at. I can never be a boo you, never in a hundred years. I cannot take somebody from baby and make them something. I can take that person that's something already and make them better. That's the way I feel about myself. Okay. So, um, so with that said, I have a couple of things that I think it'll fit because I don't know like, the geographics of the whole the whole team in here like maybe blue belts purple belts black belts and everybody else so a lot of the people that ask questions and i think the best the best techniques are learned by white belts and blue belts the best details are learned by purple belts brown belts, and black belts so it's more difficult for me to teach something at Tom, but to tweak a technique or give him one little adjustment or angle to make his technique better versus a white belt or blue belt, I can teach him the whole thing and it'll be like, oh, that kind of stuff, right? So that's where I'm at. And I see one, two, three, four. Wait, Kathy, wait, wait, five wait. black belts. Mm -hmm. Hi, Julie. <laughs> So five black belts and Oscar blue belt. Professor, ah, <laughs> oh, you're in the shadows, <laughs> like a ghost. <laughs> so, so I, I have, so I see more black belts than any other color belt. Trying to learn from the best, JP. <laughs> no, but I, I'm, I'm trying to get the, like the feedback of who's there so I can show them something. I have a move from everywhere that I can show. Like, I, I want to show a move that it's, it's not complicated so you can get the most out of it, right? Because it's difficult to show you a move, not see you drill, and not correct, right? So it's like, uh, I don't know where I'm going to be in, like doing this, right? JP, if I could ask you then, uh, we have several white belts and blue belts, but everybody has their own thing. And, and I think the black belts here like white belt moves the most, right? I mean, that's okay. Um, okay. Something I know that you're fantastic at, that, that you get everybody under the sun with, that I would maybe like to see is that straight arm bar from wherever maybe that, mm -hmm. that you see it from that maybe we're not seeing. So I know you yeah. get all over the place. You have, beautiful way of like setting that up. So maybe if that, if you have time, if you can maybe jump. Yeah, well, that, that was one of the moves that I wanted to show today because I think that's, that's it's, uh, the ambers are overrated because you know, you gotta do throw the, the arm and then hold shoulder and then throw the leg and it's a lot of stuff to get there, right? And um, so I'm gonna show that, I'm gonna start with that. So I, I have some special like guests here today. No, you can put it here, I think. I think Boyle's yes. got, yeah, got a question. We have a question. <laughs> yes. Don't put me in the spot. Babe, it's this camera that works. Professor, you see how I'm a good student, Michael? I wait, I raise my hand. You see that? Uh, I just want to give a, a quick announcement from all of us. You know, um, 
uh, since some of some of us compete, uh, I just uh, find out today is Tuesday. I find out on Sunday that um, there's no IBJJF tournaments until the end of the year if they don't find a vaccine. So if you heard rumors that oh they're gonna combine five tournaments, three tournaments, and everything together until they don't find a vaccine, um, IBJJF is not uh, comply to to make any tournaments. But we can still train, we can still be in shape, we can still be prepared. You know, I just want to say that because John, uh, as as one of the guys that are always push me to compete. Mm -hmm. uh, we travel together. We have a great times together, uh, alongside with Tom and Simone. And I mean, it's it's fantastic times. Like when we all go together in competition over over the states. You know, we all even if uh, doesn't matter if it's a small group or big group. So we always have fun. So unfortunately, as far as competition, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a while. So I just wanna let everybody know. But that doesn't mean that we can learn from the best, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I think you can put on the floor. Can you see? Come, I can. I can switch the camera so I can actually like. Oh, you can see like. Put it. Yeah. Put me on the camera so I can see myself better. <laughs> no, like. Put Let's like put it yeah. on the floor where I had it. And then we can see it. You can tell. Uh, haven't done that enough. never, right? So you can do this. Can you put? Hi, Emma. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. So here's my special guest. Hi, Carlo. Uh -oh. There you go. Guys, yeah, give, give a shout to uh to one of my uh former. Well, actually, we still compete in the same division. So we are we competed against each other a couple of times, and we became best friends. He's from New York. His name is Chad Smith. And, uh, you know, when I go to New York, compete against him, I stay in his house. <laughs> so, you know, that's how big Jiu-Jitsu is, right? Jiu -Jitsu is, right? Like, I, I want to kill this guy on the mat, and then afterwards we go have dinner together, and yeah. he throws me around. So, thank you, Sean, for coming up. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Hi, Carl. How are you, Chad? I'm good, man. How are you? Great. All right. All right. So Tom was talking about that armbar that I that I get from everywhere, right? And this this move works um, pretty much from everywhere. But let's just add something into it. So I'm gonna add a little pass that I I've been working with this like maybe a little over a year or more. I I lose track of time. But so a lot of the times when we hear trying to pass, close your knees. We try to always try to get the person to the side so we can get the angle so we can pass, right? So we get them here to pass, or we try to kick the leg out or the, so we can take the leg out to pass, right? So when I engage with somebody that has an open guard, I try to come in, say that, and when I land, I want to land in one of the knees. I don't want to land right in the center. I want to be on one of the sides, and I want to land like this. With this V right here. Preferably, I want to have the chin in between my legs. Why I want this? Because I want to be able to take out my legs this way. If I'm like this, it's hard for me to do this move. Because I like to take that way and come this way. So if I'm here, it's an easy coming up. I, I uh, JP, I see what you're doing. You're pummeling, but it's hard to see. Can you maybe come closer and show us what, what you're doing here with your knees and legs? Oh, yes. Is that better? If I'm here, that before she closes, I'm doing this. Is that better? Was that better, guys? That's perfect, thank you. So, go back a little bit. So she's she's there, I come into her, boom, I land right here, right away. Look, I'm out. I'm already out. So I'm not engaging both legs in here. And when I engage this one, I'm closing here like this. I'm pinching the chin and I'm scooping her that way. I'm already on leg drive position right here. 
You guys see that? You wanna, you wanna grab it so you can follow me? You guys get that? Yes, Professor, that was great, thank you. All right, so. Here. Boom, and look here, from here. I'm not even using strength to direct the person that way. I'm just gonna open my knee, look. He's already on the other side with no strength. Again, I'm here, boom, I lock in, take it out. Take it that way. See that? Come this way in the front, come here. So, up a little bit. I'm here, up, take it that way. Yes? So, I pinch, I get out, I get side control, boom. As I'm coming here, a lot of times this happens also like in mid-match, the person is very tired or whatever the case may be. They had a struggle and you finally pass their guard. Now here, subconsciously, they want to break. Okay. When they get that break, I'm already getting in the amber. So I pass, I get the side control. As I'm coming up, if she hugs me, which happens a lot in Jiu Jitsu, hug me, go back in. I'm gonna take my ear and I'm gonna pinch it to my, to my shoulder. Go again. That's what I'm doing. This arm is right here. I don't need to go over the head. Once you become good at this, you don't need to go over the head. At the beginning, I say you do this, you will have more control. Then you start going up. Questions? Amazing. <laughs> Other finishes, like though, do you, do you ever pull it up towards you or you said you don't step over the head? <laughs> yeah, so, so if I'm here, like I can, you know, again, you do it so much that you, you kind of like uh, waiting for it to happen. You can see it coming. I come here, she hugs me, boom. I just, I'm gonna go here. My, my goal is to get here. If I get to, the, to this part right here, that's the part that takes people the most time to know where to stop in the elbow. Because once I get here and I go like this, it's, it's over. So if I do that with her here, I already know that I have it right there. With one hand, look. So if I put my hand and I cross it, she's done. If I don't get there, the way to get there is when I go here, I'm already sliding up to get to the position. Yeah? So again, People get to side control and they don't know what to do. And this happens a lot, white belt, blue belt, and up. If you hug me like this, I'm gonna unbar you. If you hug and hold the hands together, it's more difficult. Do it, hold, hold it. But I can just clear you here and go forward, and now the hands come loose, and then again, again. So I don't want your hands to collect, to connect. So when you hug me, I do this so I can isolate one hand from the other. Yeah? Now, and big guys, sorry, big guys, go back a little bit. When I come forward here, they muscle me up. Come up. Up, 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 up. I can still get it here. Okay. <laughs> so if I do this to like Marcos, and other people that I'm gonna mention that are on the shot. And they muscle me up, cause I'm doing this, go up. I can just follow them, I still have the arm, look. I keep the arm. Same angle, look. Cause I'm following this. And it's super, it's not like a, 
You don't need a lot of steps for this. Once you know, once you can identify where the joint is, so you feel comfortable getting there. That's that's the part that that's it. If you if you know how to get there fast, you're gonna get solution almost all the time. If you don't get it, you're gonna get a sweep or something else is gonna happen. But it's really like high percentage mission for me. Um, that same thing. If you guys watch um, Cyborg against the guy from Atos, uh, Hulk, the the fight super fight they had in New York uh, a few months back. I mean, I'm watching the fight. I was like, I'm more, I'm more. I'm the, I mean, the guy's like, he's here or here. The guy's are sitting in the arm like this. I was like, dude, like, it's right there, like, right here. It's right there all the time. And he, he never went for it. So that same submission. People do this all the time. Like this, like, they put the arm right here. Same thing. That submission is so strong. Come this way, Ampor. Come from here. I could, I could be here, hold here. Like hold it, strain your arm. Yeah. Yeah, right. I can be here. I can just go like this to her. Okay. And submit her from there. There's, there's actually a, a, a clip of uh, Pan Am's Maybe last year, uh, Isaac, Isaac, uh, the guy from, it's a kid from Alliance. He's, he pulled a submission just like that. If the arm is straight, you can take it. I mean, I, anyone that I roll with, if you strain your arm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it with me. Not because I want to submit you, but I want you to get better. This is a bad technique. This is like really bad. It's like a bad habit, not technique, but bad, this is a bad habit to have this. You can have your arm straight for certain positions. Like if I want to push you away, like if I'm here, come down to the, if I'm here and I need to push you away, I can strain my arm from here. But you to me, no, because I'm going to get you. Like I'll show you guys later. I don't have another move that I got to show. Or if I'm going to stand up, because so if I'm like this, I'm doing this. That's good. He can still do a flying arm bar if he wanted to, right? Or if I don't want him to come to me, come to me, I put it straight. But that's about it. I can't have my arm come down. I can't be doing this. And people do this all the time, believe it or not. They want to like, ah, hug you like this. Look, he got me. Or I don't want you do to his part. If I do this, look. This is painful, only because, let me go, only because I did this. Every time I do this to my son, he makes me pay for it. And I do it because I'm tired. I don't want to fight no more. But if I'm tired and I want to fight, I need to be still technical, right? So I need, what I need to do here? I come here. I don't go like this. This is lazy. Do it. And he gets me all the time with that crap. But because I'm doing a bad, I'm doing, I'm developing a bad habit. So, no. so the point is, on this submission that Tom asked me like 10 minutes ago, it happens in the middle of the match, like midway. What happens also in the middle of the match? If you're fighting five minutes or you're fighting 10 minutes, the what I was telling you about personality, the, it comes in place, right? So conditioning, technique, uh, what's the other one? They use another word for, for the things that we need to have. No one talks about tactics. In jujitsu, you have to have tactics. If, you, if you're not a tactician, right? Nowadays, you don't have anything. I'm talking about from the way you enter the match, where you stand at the match, where the score is going. You got to be aware of everything around you. I have, I have won matches that the person that is fighting me is thinking that he's winning. That's poor tactics. So, you know, we are aware of the points. If I'm up 3-0, you know, I can afford a, uh, somebody to sweep me and get in close guard. I'm winning still 3-2, right? And like it or not, 
I grew up in Abitra, so I'm a competitor. So I'm not doing submission only and all that kind of stuff. So I work. A win is a win. Advantage, uh, points, submission. Yeah, I want to submit people, but I also want to win, right? You don't go to a tournament saying, I'm going to get third place this, this week. You know, you, you go to win and, and whatever it takes to do that, right? Fairly, right? So that, that position happens a lot when the person is a little tired. You work hard to pass the guard. You pass their guard. And now their reward is, okay, let me just hang out a little bit here. Boom. And that's when you're going to go, I'm bar, And it's over. Questions? I think uh, Cooch took a uh, slight at that because he took third at Worlds last year and he's like, oh, you, you know. But he, <laughs> brutal. The next one is, you know, uh, first place. Um, can you, uh, that was awesome. And, and I, I, do you have a favorite particular spot on your arm or a particular grip that you favor uh, when, you're, when you're finding that? And, and, and I, feel a lot of people oftentimes tend to be lazy with this uh, ear to shoulder pinch. Uh, and that's why it doesn't work for them. Uh, mm -hmm. that to be and, and again, which part do you prefer or is it just how deep you get is your finish? So it's become easier and easier for me with, with times. Like it depends. Like if I go with a guy that is big, the arm, the, the traveling of the arm is a little bit higher. So I may tend to like, cross instead of trying to get to the point but just cross both my arms and then pinch down with my elbows with a bigger guy with a smaller guy like carolina i get to it like in nothing i i when i land i land right there and i know that when i'm doing that when i'm bringing that help that uh, my knife up i'm make i'm producing pain to them throughout the tricep and all the way here when it gets here it's it's really painful it's uh, it's a painful submission and people, people get caught by surprise. And that is what the surprise of elements, the, the element of surprise in jiu-jitsu has gone away because there's so much videos and technique and people have seen it all that when you see it live, sometimes you really are, some people, I know people that can learn how to play guitar, you know, watching videos. I can't do that. Uh, you know, YouTube to me, it's like that. Yeah, I don't learn from, learn from YouTube. I don't, I'm not from that era. I need to be like, thought, like, like look, God. and I do like this with my face, and I go like this, and I scratch my head, and, you know, I'm one of those guys. But some people learn from YouTube, and there's a lot of technique out there, not necessarily that it's the right one, but it's difficult to, to catch somebody by surprise nowadays with a submission. So in the higher belt, it's less steps to get to the submission. That's what makes, that's the, that is the, um, the formula, less steps. And also have a counter to the counter every single move. What I say by that is like, if I go for a triangle, right? And it doesn't work because you defend, I need to go for a number after that. If I go for a heel hook, it doesn't work. I need to go for a knee bar or trail on clack. I need to have something else to, to, to battle your counter if you don't have nothing else it's not gonna work it's just not gonna work if you just go straight for a number to me or to a person that's a black belt it's just not gonna work it needs to be set up in a way that the amber is the end result not what you started with um speaking on that do you do you have a particular thing that you favor in terms of time spent drilling or time spent rolling what do you think develops exactly what you're talking about more <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so time management, right? If I, so if I tell you that I drill when I roll, would you believe that? <laughs> so if I have time and I can only do one thing, I'm doing both at the same time. But I would never favor drilling. I Me, mean, right now, the, where I'm at, I would never uh Favor drilling for the sake of time. That's the only reason I will not do that. If I, ha if I can train twice a day, I will do a, a, drill, a, a session of drilling and then a session of, of, car, of you know, life rolling. Um, and because of time, I can't do both. I personally cannot drill after I work out because my mind is not there. 
I need to be fresh. It has to be something that I can absorb. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. But that's just me. And so to clarify, you're saying you drill while you roll. So if you have, say, yes. a lower belt, and you're like, all right, well, I'm just going to pass their guard and then give them back to guard and then pass their guard and let them re-guard and then pass it. Is that that's what you mean by that? Yes. So I don't know if you guys watched, like, a few weeks back, I, I put a bunch of videos for my son. I mean, I was getting him, I'm a plotter and straight full locks because I was reading that. That was what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> we, were, we were working out, we were doing all the stuff, but I, I, met, I made sure that I try and attempt at least, say, 10 times a foot lock and 10 times an I'm a plotter. So he gave me different, without him knowing it, so he doesn't know that I'm doing this, right? Because I want to, you know, and sometimes I, he get away, sometimes he'll pass my guard because I'm doing something other than just working out with him. I think that's a I think that's a great message that that allows higher belts maybe or more advanced people to work with lower people and the lower people are getting a good work and the advanced people are getting just as good of work and whether it's what you're saying or escaping a bad spot over and over or something like that um, I think that's a great message for everybody in that yeah sense. and 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 the thing with my son is that he makes me pay like he's at that age that if I give him like this he'll top me out I mean and, and it sucks because I don't want to get top out by him but he, you know, you know. I look at Carolina and she, go, and I go, I, I, you know, I was working on something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and that's the thing, you know. We never know what the other person is is working on. You know, it's it's never. We're never like in full competition mode, doing the same thing at the same time. All very rarely, anyway. Uh, so that that's absolutely true. That was fantastic. Um, I think that. Um, uh, Boca Negro was asking if you could show like a neon belly thing because he said. <laughs> okay. Neon belly is another one that I, that I do a lot. So, <laughs> so my neon belly, it's a little bit different. I want to say because I, I, I switched the knee towards the, uh, Torso, tor torax, what, what is this called again? The little thing here? I have no idea. Come on, you gotta be a doctor? Typhoid. Typhoid. Typhoid process. Yeah, okay, so if I get to neon belly here, <laughs> um, I'm doing a couple things that, I'm, that I work on. I First thing I do is my foot on this side, Carlos. I kind of doing the same thing that I'm doing with when I started doing the past where I'm like this because I want to like, I want to generate force this way with my entire body, not only on my knee, right? So I'm like this way, I'm pushing down and this movement is making me go that way. Yeah, I'm going to go back here. Come down a little bit. So... When I'm doing that, I'm from here, I go that way. Now I'm putting pressure that, that way. And then I kind of hug and I put pressure this way. So I move it from here to here. And if I can, I'm gonna bring you up this way also. And that is very painful. Then sometimes I hug the person right here and I put pressure down. <laughs> the most fun part of this is having somebody tap you from on your bed. <laughs> Sometimes, I the first time that I do it to somebody or a guy that is like really stocky and strong or whatever, and they're trying to fight it, and I hold the belt, and I get here, and I stay there, push me away, and I come right back, push me again, and I come right back to it, push me again, and I come with this one, <laughs> and I come with this one, and they go okay, and they give up because I I don't fight the push, push me. Push me. I, I'm not fighting him. I never fight anything that you give me back. Push me. When I get here, and if I hug you like this, it's gonna hurt. So the details are: I cross my knee, or I put it forward to this one, so I go like this, right? Then I turn it this way. And if you push me away, I come with this one, or this is the perfect scenario here. Go up like this. I want you to hit this right here. 
This is what happens all the time, right? So in competition, I've done this. I'm here, push. Or they do it the opposite way. So with this one, you're gonna push me like in my chest and you're gonna throw it all that way. No, no, give me your back. Oh. Not fast, not fast. Just hold it, push me and go. This happens. I did this in Miami Open. The guy, I had the guy in uh, Neon Belly. He pushed me. I stayed. He turned that way. And I went for the umber. Okay? Yeah, I'm good. Is that good? I, I love that one. You, you, I see you hit that one a lot on people. Um, you do it even from several other spots, but I... That one's a little thicker, but it, I always thought you kind of jumped into that position, but it looked like you just kind of fell right in it. You have a good way of tucking that knee into the armpit, and, and it's right there for you. All right, but that comes from the pressure of the knee. Again, if you're tired and you feel like you feel pressure, the first thing that goes out the way, out the door, is it's a knee, my friend. Sorry. If you're tired, you're not thinking about how technical you can be. Where's the video here? Oh, here. It's here. Yeah. No, it's on this one. Yes, sir. You're here, buddy. Oh, you okay. turn yeah. it off. Oh, you turn it off. You did. I did, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so talking about that, right? Like I was talking about before that about the t the tactical side of jiu-jitsu, right? So, if I'm here with him. I mean, and I'm not just talking because I'm talking, right? I'm, you, can, you can look at my videos and you can see me doing this in the matches. Go that way. So he goes that way. This is the outbound. If I see that he's going too far that way, I'm going to come back here without him. And I'm going to wait for him right here. Because if I start a takedown or something right on the corner of the edge, that blue map between the blue and the yellow, and I get something done, and we land outside, I may not even get an advantage. And that's demoralizing for me to spend all that energy on the side and then come back and get nothing. So that is an example of a tactical uh, action in a, in, a, in, a, in a match. If you are on the edges of the mat area, right? Don't do anything there. Bring the guy back in the middle center. Reset. There's no point of you doing anything. And that happens a lot. People wait until they get to the freaking edge to do something. For what? There's no point, right? Again, I know how many minutes I have. If I don't like to be on this side, if I want, let's say, say Buyo's here on this side, right? And I want to look at Buyo. Boom, I get here. Now I can look at Buyo. Make sense? But if you need a coach and you giving your back to the coach, how he can coach you? If I want to look at Buyu, I turn around. If you look at all my matches at the World's 2016, if you look at the videos, I actually have the videos, I found them on, on the on the on the pro rapper. And I'm just looking at it because you know it's pandemic, whatever, I had time. I was like, man, I'm like, I'm like, you can, you can see, I like, I'm looking at Buyu, I'm looking, Buyu's next to Bolachina. On this side, it was uh, uh, Matt with, um, <laughs> with uh, Tony. Uh, uh, um, Heaven was behind everybody, but he's so tall that you can see him. I, I was aware of everything going on in my, in my, in, around me. You know, the time, you know, the referee not giving the points to mission. Buyu going like, like, Really, like, you know, you know, he's frustrated. He's going, like, what? And like, you know, I, and I can see all these things. I was like, I don't even know how I won. Because, I mean, some of the matches I won by one advantage. But I deserve the points, but then they gave me the points. Or they reset as the wrong, I mean, so many different things. That's another one. Resetting with the wrong grips. Come here. 
If I'm resetting right here, right? Come down. And I have this right here. If I have this right here, right? And they reset me, take this away from me. And I'm like this, I'm getting back. Go back, take it away. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let him dictate what my grips were. If I know that I had these two, I want them back. If I didn't have them, that's fine. But for him to say, no, I was here, uh-uh, not gonna work, not with me. I'm gonna go right here, like that. Make sense? Go back. Huh? Somebody wrote something. I like the aggressiveness. Huh? <laughs> I like the aggressiveness. Well, we're competing, right? It, it, not, you know, we're, we can be nice after the fact. Yeah. We have a question. <laughs> Professor has a question. Yes. <laughs> like, Sorry. So, no, it's okay. I think it's a, it's a great point. Uh, I, I just want to add, what John said is really, really true, like, uh, for whoever likes to compete. Because if we just like out of, this, out of the movement, you know, roll out, whatever, and then reset to the mats. The referee is already tired. He doesn't know how many, you don't know whether he ate, whether he drank. He doesn't care. He's going to set him up the way that he wants. And if it's somebody complains too much, he's going to put both of you guys to stand up in your feet. So what you said about like uh, 15 minutes earlier was right. Nowadays, you got to look at the time. You got to look at the the, the, the points, you got to look at the, the advantage, everything on place. Because many times you're going to see people maybe referee like two points for the other guy, but they give like four points. Because at the end, at the end of the match, you don't know how much points you got because you're still fighting. But you got to remember your grips, your positioning. You know, if the guy has the hand a little bit here, a little bit there. And I still see people sometimes very naive to just let it out. Oh, let it go. You know, that's a great point, John. Well, I have a story about that. Um, I went to Atlanta with a couple of the guys, and one of the guys was Hans. Hans, we was fighting. He was a purple belt. I think I was, I was a brown belt at that time. And I'm coaching him from the corner, oh, whatever, whatever. And he wins the match. He literally won the match. The ref takes his hand, and he raises the other person's hand, right? And Hans accepted it. He walked out of the match. A loser because the referee made a mistake. I was like, I was, I started screaming, blah, 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 blah. and I, you know, I said, no, you had to run. And I mean, rare that happens. The guy went for the table and he caught him right back in, and then he raised hands, hand. I was like, what happened, dude? Like, what do you allow that to happen? You know, in the middle of competition, anything can happen. You have to be hyper aware of everything. I mean, you work so hard to get there, you're gonna let a referee just mistakenly give the hand to somebody else? Hell no. <laughs> questions? I, oh my God, I see that. Is that all the questions in there? I mean. No, Professor, those are all uh, uh, Professor Buyu saying how amazing you are. <laughs> I mean, I, um, I say publicly that when I hear you on the, on the Zoom, I don't I don't I'm never alive, but I watch the videos, guys. Just you know. That's uh, awesome. working, working out my wife at this time, but I your voice takes me some places, man. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, we do have one question for you, Professor. Yeah. Uh, Matt is asking he'd love to see some positions where you could find the Dars choke from. Okay. Who's Matt? Matthew, wave, please. Hey, yes, I'm not. I got to say that I'm not proficient in the Dars. It's not a move that I favor over the years. You know, that would be Buyu. Buyu can show you a thousand different moves from there. I don't have nothing good to bring you. If I, 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 I can show you the basic, but that's not my thing. I want to show you the best that I can, not something that is mediocre. Sorry. I, I like here, guys, I think we can all take that. Like, you know, I, I think that needs to be spoken more often from people of authority. Say, hey, that's not my specialty, right? I think that's a fantastic answer. Um, and, and we'll get you some, some people that do Darcy's, okay? How about that, Matthew? <laughs> we have plenty. It's yeah. not even boo you. 
Okay. Listen. The best one is Tom. Look at the side of his arms. He can de he can deck dart strokes for everywhere, bro. He's not a lizard. <laughs> I don't want. I'll show you the darts. I, I know a thing or two about those. Any other uh, questions? I can go back to the other technique that I was going to show. I, I actually, if I could just go back just for a moment to that knee on belly, because I noticed you do it very different than a lot of people do. You don't grab the far knee. You don't grab the, you grab the hip initially, but that's not really your objective necessarily. Um, no. You kind of pin and push and squeeze uh, yeah. and get like a full upper body grip and then pull that into the knee you're driving through. So that's, that's different. Yeah. Than a lot of people do their knee on belly. Good, uh, uh, good, good observation, Tom. The reason why I don't hold anything there, I want you to move. I want you to, I want to see some reaction from you because I have multiple things that I can do from there. I can go to the other side. I can go for the armbar. I can go to mount. I can armbar you from the left or the right. But if I hold you still, I'm just getting the points. And I, I literally, with that move, I can, I can, I can say that I, that, I, that I can break people with that move because they're going to try and try and try and try and get me out and it's going to take a minute. So I like, I like the fact that so the, the deeper scenario there is that you're using this as a trap. If they don't tap, it's a trap to the next thing because you're still yeah. to fail, right? You're like leading the mouse down. Exactly. The if I, that you know is going to be bad for them. Yeah, if I hold you here, I really much, I'm not letting you do anything, right? So I'm just holding you there. Go back a little bit so that's too close. So you see the whole body? Yeah. But if I'm here like this, you're going to feel like right now, look, right now, I can just go like this. And I already got the arm bar cut. It's done. He's done. If I get, if I collect his shoulder, he's done. Yeah? Make sense? And usually that's what happens. So when I teach somebody to defend this from me, the first thing you need to do is hold it and close the elbow. So put it and then close it. So you don't give me this arm. Yeah? But usually what happens is in order for you to put force into this hand, you got to open the elbow a little bit. And that's what I'm going to come in. And if you don't give me the, the arm because you don't touch my knee because you're tending or you know that you can't do that, that's fine. I get here. I come up and I go right back into the knee. Push me away. Get your back. Or push me this way. Boom, I get here. More demoralization. Boom, I get here. I get here. I can spin in your belly all day long. And every time you find a roadblock, it's going to be less and less you're going to do. Until you do this. Wow. I love arms. They do that. Trust me. Sometimes people give you a top because they want out. Thank you for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mateo. <laughs> Sometimes people will let you tap them out because they're done. And you know, um, it doesn't get any more pure than, than martial arts, right? Like MMA, that's a little bit over the top. I think that's, but like us, we fight like for the art. We don't do it for money, but we will really, I mean, it's not war. We're not going to die in the mat. But, you know, all the other emotions, our ego, our pride, our humbleness, uh, sadness, happiness, pain, suffering, everything, it's on those mats. Everything. And when you break somebody else that you know that trained hard like you did, and you come victorious, it's nice. But it's also humbling. You know, uh, you know, hence the, fa the fact that I have really great friends that I competed against. I want to kill this guy, Shad, every time I see him. <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> but he's my friend. Where else can you get that?
I don't know where. I don't know any sport like this. I mean, maybe there is, but I don't know any myself. I mean, I play a little golf, and at the end, you know, you bet a little bit of money and you shake hands. It's golf. You're getting a ball. No big deal. When you're trying to break somebody's arm, break their spirit, <laughs> day in and day out, man, this is something special. Oscar, you're smiling, huh? <laughs> Oscar, too. I go with Oscar. This guy's a doctor, right? And, you know, and, you know, in the middle of the match, I was like, this guy's a doctor. He wants to rip my head off. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's all good, right? Any other questions before I teach you guys something else? Keep going. I can't talk all day. Go you take the reins, JP. Okay, so I want to talk about something that happened to me personally. Like, I think I, I was caught in between. Um, I can't see. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. <I'm> blind. Us. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. So I was caught in between the era of you know, heel hooks and leg locks are for, you know, weak people and not fighters. And the era where you realize that if you want to be uh, current in the sport, you need to learn that stuff, right? Um, I remember late blue belt, I went to Volcas and I was like, holy crap, what the, f like, they're, attacking my legs, <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> like, why are they doing that to me? But really, if you look at the FBJF rules, even a white belt can do a straight pull lock. And I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of us, like 10 year old and up, where we come from a structure academy, where we like, we are like IBJF like purist, so to speak. We don't practice that because we don't need it, right? But really, it's part, of, it's, part of the, it's part of the body, it's part of the limbs, right? We can attack them. I mean, wrist locks are very effective. You need three pounds of pressure to break one of these puppies right here, right? The ankles, the same thing. So, and so if the foot locks are permitted and I have to have since white belt, why are we not teaching them since white belt? Now, I can have my own explanation is that, you know, when you say foot lock, People may think that it's heel hooks or toe hooks. It's not the same. It's not the same joint or body part, right? But technically, they are legal foot locks. And it's, so it took me a while, a minute. Um, when I was a white belt and blue belt, I used to do a lot of arm bars and I used to work off my back. You know, but it's going like this. And when I was a, like, mm -hmm. Like almost getting my purple belt into brown belt, I started developing my uh, my bottom game, my open guard game, and it was it was scary because I would get I would get murdered. I mean, and people ask me this question all the time. I was like, oh, what do you prefer? Like, I prefer none. I can be good anywhere because I took it about myself to okay, what's going to be my next challenge? What else can I learn and be comfortable and be operational in a competition? And I want to work on that. So I did that. And if you watch videos from me on white belt to now, you can see like purple belt, I did a bunch of betting baller, a bunch of back pace, and a bunch of bone arrow toes. White belt, blue belt, uh, umbars left and right. And omoplatas. I love omoplatas. That's another thing that I like a lot. And I use it for different things. Um, but I, think, I feel that my game, and I remember my first brown belt competition, I went to Atlanta, and... It was, I think it was like a minute left and it was 4-4, it was tight. And the guy, I, I touched the guy's foot. <laughs> I just touched it. And I thought about going for the, for the toe hole and I didn't. And I was on top. And I, one thing that I tell people is that if you don't want somebody to touch your feet, don't touch them, theirs. Cause they will touch yours. If I slap you in the face, you're gonna come back and slap me in the face again. If I kick you, you're going to kick me back, right? That's just nature. So I touched his foot. I didn't go for a submission. He ended up sweeping me, and he went for my toe. And 
I was so out of it that I was trying to get to his back while he's going to the foot. And that foot went like, crack, 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 like 10 times before I tapped. And then I told Buyo about it. And then I came back from, from Atlanta and I started doing foot locks. And I, like, Simone, I get you another foot locks. Kathy, I do it to her too, right? Because I want you guys to be exposed and not happen that what happened to me. Then so Buyo started looking at me and he started giving me little, little things like, Oh, you're doing this wrong. Put the elbow here. Put this there. And I was like, oh, okay. God damn it. I got to learn so much. <laughs> little things. Like little details. Like why not finishing here? Why not doing this here? Why, you know, so stuff like that. Because I was not exposed to them early on. So when I started learning them, and I remember the guy told me, the guy got the black belt that day on the podium. He goes, toes, get used to it, buddy. Brown belt, that's all you're going to see. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so I started working on that stuff because I wanted to get better. I still don't feel that I'm there yet because it takes time, but I've developed some. And I, and I, and I went back and I, and I know that a, brown, a blue belt, like juveniles, they love full locks. They love it. They can do it at 16 years old. It's deal. And you can see a lot of, a lot of submissions. And if you see me rolling with, with my son, he's a green belt now, but since he's a yellow belt, I've been attacking his foot, toe holes, knee bars, everything. I mean, with moderation, right? I'm not doing it to kill him, but I want him to be exposed and feel what it is to be there, right? So. so, you watch the videos with our phone and I lately, I've been working on this, on this foot lock right here. Will you correct me if I'm wrong? Bo Botina? Botina full lock? Botina? Botina? You can't hear him. Oh, did we mute you? I, you're mute. We muted everybody? No, no. Okay. No. Botina. Botina, which is the Mikey Musumashi you used to Bochina. talk about? Like it's like a boot, like a boot, right? Yeah, Botina, it's like a small boot in Portuguese. Small boot. Okay. okay. Portuguese so. classes are starting next week. <laughs> All right, so a couple of details here. When you get this foot right here, you don't want to go really high. You don't want to go high here because you want to be able to extend. So if you're too high, you don't have the flexibility of extending yourself, right? So uh, the first thing is you want to hook the leg right here. Bring it down. You want to hook the leg right here, and you want to come over right here. So this one creates separation. This one is what's setting up the foot lock. Now, if I'm straight like this, and I go to do the foot lock right here, this is like me trying to break a tree, right? It's very strong, because I'm, I'm trying to attack the entire leg, yeah? This foot, what's gonna do for me is it's gonna make this, bend it, make it a half tree. Like a, like a, a branch? Chunk? Yeah. A, br a branch? branch? A branch, like a smaller section of the tree and thinner, right? Like, he's got chicken wings, he's black, he's got chicken wings right here. So <laughs> maybe a little strong here, maybe here, nothing. So from here, <laughs> Come the other side. So, stay right there. So this foot is gonna go up so I can break the tree. This one is gonna keep the separation right here but I need him to stay away so I can then go back. If I get down here, keep following me, Carlo. And he doesn't tap from here. I'm still putting pressure on top of it. I am going to extend both my knees that way forward. Now I'm gonna let him go a little bit because I don't want him to tap, but it's gonna look something like this. And there's a third gear from here. If I get here and I push that way, and he doesn't tap, I'm gonna go belly down. 
sorry. Say he doesn't tap and I'm here, I'm gonna extend here. So there's like four different positions here that you can change. Remember that I said earlier that if one doesn't work, if right doesn't work, you gotta go left. If left doesn't work, you gotta go center. So that's one of those things. There's four different, four or five different areas where you can, oh, he doesn't tap here, let me go here. He doesn't tap here, let me go here. So it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Make sense? So I'm here, I'm holding down, like down here, not here. Here, I don't have any movement. Here, I can move my, I need my body it's to be fine. able to move. So I get here right away, I'm holding down, and I'm gonna hook right here. Now, you can skip one and two. You can go straight to this. If you want to, no problem. Um, with this move right here, also, you don't have to be worried about your guard being passed. Uh, in the worst case scenario, he stands up, I see that leg. I can stand over him. So I'm here, I grab. If I want this leg to, to not to move, I can also punch right here and grab on the knee and then come right here right away. If he, if he uh, wants to also, like you can come to my neck like here. This happens too, like, because what do I need to get the submission done is I need to go away from him, right? So if he grabs me here, that's fine. I'm gonna go to this side, come to push up. From here, go back a little bit. It's right there. Right there. Right there. I want to take this leg that it was here, and I'm going to put it under like his armpit so I can break the grip right here. Yeah? Now, from here, I go back to my position, but I come right here. Look, I come into the leg right here in the bottom. I step on it because now, from here, I'm going to stand him. I'm going to go like this. But if I let the, the leg out and I try to go that way, come to me with it. He comes right with me and now he gets me back in the back. So when we land right here and he's grabbing me, I can't fight here for my push and then I go right here. And then from here, look, I turn this way. Another defense that happens from here is so the whole thing here is that I want you want to put my I want to put my legs my knees together right so he's good he knows about it when I go this way grab my, grab my knee open it up he opens my knee look what happened he makes me go this way again the same thing from here I can also finish him so instead of me needing to um uh, to go that way what I do from here is I close this knee. So I can make an angle on his knee, and then now from here, I can tap him out. So I, I close a little bit. Now, if I pull this way, he's gonna tap. Because from here, from this side, come this side, come. From this side, I was pinching the knees this way, right? So I was able to go this way. When he, when he took me that way to open my knee, this way. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I kind of do the same motion. So he opened this way. So all I gotta do is close this way. And now I extend. John, I have I have two questions. Um so is it legal to turn towards that their other leg? I thought that was oh, illegal. Good question. But I notice that I'm not turning that way. So are you okay? Come this way. So what I cannot do is 
this. Yeah? But if I'm but if I'm here and I just do and I pinch, I'm not turning that way. I'm going this way. Make sense? If I do this, this is illegal. But because he brought me here, right? I'm here, etc. He brought me here. Look, he brought me here. We're good. All I gotta do is close my knee and stand. I'm not going inside. Well, that's a good question, though. Tom, uh, yeah, I was gonna ask that question. Uh, JP, real quick, a question on when they, a lot of times they'll grab the gi and then they'll kind of follow you up and kind of stretch that foot out, like through the, through the arm. Yes. You know, like how do you how do you react to that? Good question. Um, so, what's preventing him from doing what you're saying is that I have this hook right here. If I don't have that hook, it's, he, it's, it's game on for him. So, even like hold me here, punch your foot. He cannot punch your foot because I have the hook right here. Now, punch a foot now. That's oh, <laughs> scary. That's the difference. Um, John, uh, actually, this is for John Paul. John Paul, where do you feel the pressure? In the midfoot, in your Achilles, back of your leg, where do you feel it? Right in the joint of my ankle. So the front, the back, or the whole piece? I want to say about the front. So I'm feeling it, the pain, like right about here. That's why it's called the botina. It's not a, it's not a, it's not an Achilles uh, tab. It's not. It's completely. The foot is under my armpit, and I just, I'm just getting the the right angle so I can top them out. I can't. If you look at my, look at my both my arms, right? I had a motorcycle accident when I was when I was 16. Look what happens with my left hand. So this was my problem with this submission. For years, I was trying to get the Achilles heel hook, uh, foot lock. It doesn't work. For me, because of my, because of this, like, you see, I can't get the knife to work effectively. And every right person that I know favors the left side for foot locks. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I had to really adjust and like, and I was, um, what you call it? Like, um, I didn't have confidence in the move. Because of that, because I was attacking the Achilles hook. So, so it's not it's not your typical, you know, knife. It's more like you're using your lat and you're using your tricep feet here and really like angling. It's almost like a choke where. It's not strength, it's holding the position and being very stiff with it, like holding it for a little bit until they tap it. It's not like, ah, like, because I, I don't have any, other, any, any move that requires strength, I don't have in my arsenal because I'm not a strong guy. It has to be effective. It has to be like more, more jujitsu than strength for, for me to use it. That's another thing about jiu-jitsu. You need to know your weaknesses. If you're not strong, don't try to act strong. If you don't have a big mouth, don't talk crap. <laughs> if it comes natural to you, do it. If it doesn't, don't do it because your coach do, does it or whatever, or you want to look cool. Do what, do you. And it works so good in jiu-jitsu. When you are you, see, the reason why we, we have all these, like, all these people in jiu-jitsu that like, like, really like, you know, there are very talented athletes and stuff like that. Like, how many Michael Jordans do you have? One, right? In Jiu-Jitsu, we have so many great people. And when you put them all together, you cannot say that they're the same. Because the one thing that they bring to their game is themselves. It's like, a, it's like an artist, like a singer. Like, Shakira has a voice. Mark Anthony has a different voice. That's why they're unique. And in Jiu-Jitsu, it's the same thing. You have to be you. I can use everyone's game in this shot and make it mine and it's and it's mine when i put my myself into it 
And that's what works, I think. That's my personal opinion. There's a difference between, um, when you say copycat, like imitando, imitating. imitating somebody, then emulating somebody. Like I like things about Tom, I like things about Buyo, Simone, like I don't know why, but I, I identify a lot with Simone and, and, and Merengue. I don't know why, maybe I have a female side of me, I don't know. I don't know. Joan, Joan brings like a lot of good things in my, to me. I mean, he, you guys don't notice, but I mean, I Joan forgot like, jealous, John. John forgot <laughs> jealous. We have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It, it's true. Like, you know, you, you, you connect with some people. And like, S Simone is super brave. So Simone has like, a, you know, she has cojones. You know, she like I think she wrote some a pair of, of those like in there like some somewhere. <laughs> she wants to say something. You know, and I, but we. <laughs> well, I just wanna, I just wanna you mention about imitate and emulate. So I wanna yes. emulate one of the phrases of uh, <laughs> Professor Tom, and that's a phrase that I always I tell uh, when people tell me, man, I like this place or I like to be with this person, and Tom taught me. Likes attract likes. That is very true. Yeah, sure. But also, but also, you have to you want to be in relationships that you can gain something from it, right? Like, I, I know that that Tom and Buyo and Chad and Simone, you guys keep me on my toes, and I like that because that's the way we grow, right? We feed off each other. It can't be a one way street. I mean, that may sound selfish, but that's, that's the way people grow, when you have both ways. If I'm only feeding you, feeding you, feeding you, you know, it, it's not gonna work. Yeah, 100% JP, symbiotic relationships, and, and I feel like this is what this is all about, and, and I appreciate everybody coming in and participating in these things. That was, that was fantastic stuff. Hopefully people got some stuff out of it. I know I personally did, so. I, I always do with you, so that was awesome. Thank you. I mean, that, it's hard to do this, like, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's harder for the, for the people, like the lower belt, it's hard to like dissect something like this. Like if I see Tom or Buyu or Diesel, or one of the guys giving, giving me a technique, like I, I've been there with them, so it's like, oh, you know, I, like, I, I get it, you know what I mean? But it's, you know, props to the, to the lower belts that, that are like, you know, learning now and, they're here and they're taking the time um, to do this. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Hopefully, guys, you get a chance to, to watch this again. I'm going to put it on YouTube for everybody if, if you need to come back and watch it. I know King came a little late, but we still love you. Um, so <laughs> I'll check YouTube later. Uh, any other questions, guys, before we shut this down for today? Anything else? Nothing else? That was awesome, man. John, I appreciate you so much, man. That was Thank fantastic. you so much. Appreciate Shad, thank you for coming, Shad. Appreciate your support. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to see you. I yes. hope you don't use these techniques against me when you compete against me, all right? Uh, don't worry. That will be unfair. Yeah, I will never do that. <laughs> don't worry. I'll show you if you don't mind. I've got some, <laughs> some, uh, I've got some ankle lock stuff to, to add to your game, my friend. All right, good. Looking forward to it. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you guys. Love you all. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.